There's none like him. Amen. There's none like him. There's none like him. There's none like Jesus. And that's a big amen. Amen. I don't believe in preaching. Amen. What uh what I just feel like preaching. I don't believe that a pastor needs to send spy saints into the congregation to find out everyone's problems, come back to him, give him a report so he can figure out what to preach. I personally believe it's as simple as just asking God, God, what should I preach? Because he knows. Amen. Amen. And God has a word for us today. Amen. Yes, he does. <sighs> The verse I'm going to be preaching on is a small verse, very short. It's about nine words. But I want to read some scriptures going down to that. So I'm going to say that you don't need to stand. Uh, I understand if, uh, you know, if you're tired and etc. But if you desire to stand, feel free to stand. Let's turn to Romans chapter 6. All right, yes, sir. Amen. Romans chapter 6. That's a little halfway past the half. That's, that's a little bit past the halfway point in your Bible. Romans chapter 6. And the Holy Bible reads, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Therein. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized, hallelujah, into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin, that the body of sin, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. <clears throat> and here is our text for this hour. For he that is dead is freed from sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. I'm going to read that one more time. For he that is dead is freed from sin. And that's a big amen. Amen. You may take your seats. Thank you for standing so long. <clears throat> Those of you that desire to pray <laughs> for me, even if it's a quick prayer, Amen. please pray that God blesses me to deliver this. Amen. Amen. How he wants me to. <clears throat> God has a message today for every single person that's in here. Yes. Whether you have ever been saved whether you are no longer saved or you have never been or, or you are saved right now, God has a message for every one of us that are sitting down where they're sitting down. <clears throat> he that is dead is freed from sin. I'm going to do my best to be conscious of the time. Amen. I give uh, honor to our bishop and pastor in his absence. First Lady McGriff for <laughs> being married to our pastor. Amen. 30, 
how many years? 55. 55. Sorry, I was thinking of the, the church. But 55 long, amen, beautiful married years. 57. I apologize. Amen. <clears throat> Bear with me because we're going to take a little trip through the realities of God's word and it might feel a little better near the end, but to appreciate the end, we have to take the journey to get there and we'll appreciate the end. Amen. The Bible reads, for he that is dead is freed from sin. The Bible is layered revelation. The Bible is layered truth. The Bible will never, ever, ever, ever contradict itself. If it appears to, you need to look in the Bible and find the answer in the Bible that will bridge two, two things that seem to contradict. Because it does not contradict. <clears throat> because God does not contradict. He that is dead is freed from sin. Amen. That refers to two types of death. That refers to natural death, which is total freedom from sin. And that applies to crucifying your flesh and living submit to God under the power of the Holy Ghost. My subject today is the only way. The only way. For he that is dead is freed from sin. <clears throat> Every one of us in here one day is going to die. It's an appointment that you have to keep and you cannot cancel and you don't have a choice. <clears throat> you don't choose the day and you don't choose the time. God has made your appointment with death and you're going to keep it. Whether someone is an atheist or a Buddhist or a Muslim or they believe in Scientology or they're a professing Christian or they're a biblical Christian, whoever they are, with respect and love to everybody equal, all of us are going to die, period. You know, it's quite a thought. I, um, I, when I go out and about and I see hundreds of people, hundreds of people, you know, there's, I won't just say I, I'll sell all of us. There's mystery behind meeting a stranger. There's mystery behind seeing the people walk by and drive by. You don't know who's in the car next to you. You don't know who you're looking at, at on the sidewalk. You don't know who's in the mall with you. If we knew those things, there'd be no crime. Amen. Yes. None of us can truly say that we know whether or not the person next to us is going to be saved when they die. The only person that can say that is God. The only person. We would like to think we could. But the only person that really knows is God. When we moved here, I applied for over a hundred jobs because I have a wife. And the Bible says if a man provides not for his own, he's worse than an infidel and he's denied the faith. Amen. And that's the Bible. You know, it's really something. This word can always say something better than I can come up with. You can, you can basically get up here and just read to people and people will be getting delivered. The reason why I didn't just skip down to verse 7 with my nine, verse, nine word verse of the day is because I know that this will be the only Bible some people read until next Sunday. And I say that with love. I love you unpartially. Amen. But the Bible says he that provides not for his own is worse than an infidel and has denied the faith. So you will be lost, brother, if you have a family and you think it's more important to play PS4, amen, than to pay the bills and to feed your wife and kids. 
But out of over a hundred jobs that I applied for when we moved down here from the Bay Area, the one place, <laughs> the one place that gave me a chance, amen, was Dignity Memorial, amen, funeral home. And that's a busy funeral home because Dignity Memorial is a corporation. Mm -hmm. They own funeral homes across the whole entire United States and some in Puerto Rico. Come on. It is not your average mom and pop funeral home where you might get one or two dead people cases, decedents a week. But it's a place where me by myself might be picking up at least five or six people a day. I, bear with me, amen. I have personally, I have personally wrapped the last bed sheet that somebody would ever have on them to at least 400 people with these hands that God has created. Amen. There is something about death that frightens most of us. There is a mystery behind it. Like I said, you don't choose the day or the hour that you meet your appointment, but you will be on time. I have been in houses that cost so much money, some of us will never step foot in a house that costs that much. And I have been in I guess what you would call the bad neighborhoods of San Diego. And I have been in homes that are probably on the cheapest end of the real estate market. I have seen the end personally of the rich. And I have seen the end of the gangbanger. I have seen the man whose family picked out his clothes and gave him, hey, hallelujah, man, and gave him, amen, the best they could afford. And I have seen the man whose homies picked up something from Goodwill because he was couch hopping and they gave him all they could afford. I have seen the man whose photos at his funeral look pristine like a president. And I have seen the man throwing up West Side with a blunt in his mouth. God does not care what color you are. And God does not care how old you are. God does not care what your annual income is. I have seen the faces of people who appear who appear to have died in peace. I have seen the faces of people. I could just leave that silent. In the end, they all died. It is a sad thing in the eyes of God for a human being to never understand their purpose and to never ever ever meet their destiny that God has for them it is a sad thing let me tell you something there are many people who only think that the God of the Bible is a God of wrath and judgment they only think that God hates people. They only think that God is waiting to cast you into hell. And then there are only people, there are people who only think that God is a God of love. And they manipulate and they change the definition of the word grace. And they say, you can do anything you feel like and you'll be saved. God is a God of order. Yes. He loves everyone. Yes. And let me tell you something. If you have the Holy Ghost, you have no excuse. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
to look at anybody with a proud look. And if you think you do, I promise you that you are not reading your Bible. Because this Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. That's it. That's it. That's it. This Bible says that God hates a proud look. This Bible says blessed are the peacemakers, for they are the children of God. And this Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. This Bible says it is not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance and to the knowledge of the truth. There is nobody like him. Let's travel a tiny bit farther. Amen. Mankind. Since the fall of Adam. You could say Eve. But Adam ate the fruit too. We call him Adam in English. If he didn't eat the fruit. Eve would have died. And God would have made Adam another wife. But because he ate the fruit, they both died spiritually. And they both procreated. Because of the fall of Adam, we have all faced this predicament that we call sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I say this with all sensitivity, amen, to everybody. I don't like to throw I don't like to throw around the word slave because I love people. I don't see skin color. Amen. In the sense that I, I'm trying to say what I'm trying to say. You, you got me. Amen. But I respect people. I say this humbly and well reserved. Mankind has been enslaved by sin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If it was not for that, you would have no Jeffrey Dahmers. If it was not for that, your kids could walk to school. Yes. If it was not for that, you wouldn't have to worry about them being behind you at the grocery store. If it was not for that, every marriage would have never been broken up. Yes. If it was not for that, amen. If it was not for that, we'd have no death. He that is dead is freed from sin. Amen. I want you to think, I want you to really think about this. Are the pleasures that some of you, not all of us, are the pleasures that some of you are putting before God worth it? Are the pleasures that some of you are putting before God worth it? Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, of course, is eternal life. But the wages in San Diego, uh, <laughs> there are casinos everywhere. Uh -huh. We don't have it like that in the Bay Area. Not like down here. Down here, I'm on the freeway. I'll pass 10 casino billboards in like five minutes. <laughs> Barona, Barona, Barona. They got three in a row on eight. I'm like, are you kidding me? The loosest slots. Ever, Verona. That's the truth. That's the truth. <laughs> if you sit down at that table and you stack your chips, you are waging. You are waging your money. When you play around with sin, you are waging eternal life. That's good right there. Really think about that. Saint of God. I'm talking to everybody too. So I'm not leaving out those who haven't been born again. I have something to say to you too. Saint of God, when you sin, you are waging something that you tried really hard to get. And there is no telling whether or not God will let you come back. Because some of us don't get a thousand chances. Guess and the unborn again. God loves you uh -huh. more than your mind can ever grasp. 
in your position is your life that you are living now worth missing out on the opportunity for eternal life let me take us in the bible amen i'm conscious of the time let me take us amen we don't really got to turn there but let me take us amen to luke chapter 16 i want to say about the rich man and lazarus it gives us a brief description of two people under the Old Testament. It is not a parable. Jesus, it does not say that Jesus spoke a parable to them. Jesus said there was a rich man and there was a beggar named Lazarus. The rich man had everything he wanted in this life. It says when he died, he was buried. Amen. <laughs> If it happened now, it might have been me that went and picked him up. And it says, Lazarus died, amen, the beggar. <clears throat> and he was carried by the angels into a place that the Bible describes as Abraham's bosom. The rich man saw Abraham and Lazarus. Lazarus was a common name in the Old Testament, kind of like <clears throat> the name just think of a common name. Lazarus was a common name. This big, the, the rich man saw this beggar, Lazarus, with Abraham. And, and he said, Father Abraham, send Lazarus back up to earth that he may warn my brethren that they will not come into this place of torment. Come on, come on, come on. He asked if... Abraham could dip his finger in water and dip it on his tongue to cool his tongue. If you dip your finger in water and you hang it down, you know what's going to come off the tip? One drop. He was so hot in the flames, in English what we read as hell, that he was desperate for a drop of water. Lazarus, on the other hand, was entering into eternal rest. <laughs> Normally, I like to be energetic when I preach. I did not even plan on preaching, <laughs> amen, like this. Let's cross over the gulf. He said that there was a gulf in between the two. Abraham told the rich man, there's a gulf fixed that God put there. So that they on either side could not go over that would go over. Mm. But let's go on the other side. Amen. With Lazarus. Amen. He died under the Old Testament. Amen. And the Bible tells us he was saved. I want to wrap this up. In today's time. <laughs> man, Lord, help me, God, to get pumped up here because I don't want to end it. Slow and quiet. <laughs> Man, the saints will give you like 50 compliments. Amen. But nowadays, let me close this. Bible, that is. Let me look away from these little notes. We live in a day and an hour, amen, where God is pouring out his grace. Yes. Pouring out his grace. Yeah. Amen. This is a church full of people who have not all been raised in church. Oh! God is looking, amen, for the people Amen. In the ghetto to call on him. He's looking for the people in the White House in, amen, Atherton, California, to call on him. Yes. God is looking, amen, for anybody to call on him. The Bible says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that means that he will send them one of us. Amen. We barely preach about the sin of neglecting evangelism. Because the Bible says that God has given to us yes. 
the Ministry of Reconciliation. Uh -huh. So when they call on us, he's going to send you. But when you think that that person's not worth you taking an extra three minutes to grab your lunch, amen, God is looking at you like you got to be kidding me. Amen. You need to be sensitive to God. And that comes through a prayer. But God is pouring out his love and his plan. Amen. Every single day there are people getting saved. And I'm not talking about one, two, ten. I'm talking about, I can't say how many, probably thousands. Amen. All around the world. Amen. And it is those who believe that it's worth, amen, receiving redemption. Amen. Believe that it's worth, amen, just repenting for your sins. Believe that it's worth putting the Holy Ghost, amen, before flesh. Amen. He that is dead is freed from sin. Let me talk about that second definition of the word dead for like two minutes. But when it says he that is dead, amen, talking about, this is in Romans, amen, spirit-filled letter written to spirit-filled saints layered with revelation. The more you fast and pray, you will have power over your flesh, amen, and the power of the Holy Ghost will render your flesh inactive, so to speak, amen, the power of sin, amen. I feel like I could go a couple directions right now. Let me just say this. There is nothing in this world missing out on heaven for. Come on now. There is no family member, no man, no woman, no pleasure in this life worth missing out on heaven. Living the life, let me say this, living the life of a Christian is not a boring life. It is not a boring life. You can enjoy life. Amen. Delivered from the bondage of sin. And you can enter into eternal rest. Because there is coming a day. When he, like Elder Lantrum said, is going to split the clouds. And he's coming once. Once. Whether you believe that it's worth it to be ready or whether you don't, he's coming. Just as you're going to keep your appointment with death, God is going to keep his appointment with mankind. And he's coming once. When I repented for my sins, there were people that I wanted to kill in this life. I wanted to kill people. I had no choice when I read the Bible and he said, if you don't forgive men, he won't forgive you. To me, it's as easy as that. I don't know why people make it so complicated. It's as easy as that. If you make it complicated, you don't believe this. And anything otherwise is an excuse. He said, if you don't forgive men, he won't forgive you. So guess what? When I read that, I knew I wanted to be saved. People I wanted to kill, I had no choice but to forgive. I had no choice but to forgive. Yeah. Boom! Filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Filled with the Holy Ghost right in the bedroom. Speaking in tongues directly from heaven. Amen. As God gave the utterance. Amen. And of course, following after that, baptized, amen, in the glorious, only saving name of Jesus. Now, I'm not here to talk about myself, but I'm giving this little bit of testimony, amen, to give somebody some faith. Amen. Because I couldn't even give, I, a lot of people couldn't even handle my testimony. And so, there's people in here who have testimonies that would blow your mind, blow your mind, and you think you know them. Come on. Come on. Somebody has to believe that it is worth it to be saved, to give their life to God. Amen. Let me end it on this scripture. Romans 21 and 8. 
It reads, but the fearful, that means the faithless, but the fearful or the faithless and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers or a male prostitute and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars. <laughs> when you read that, you think, man, I am damned. <laughs> but the gift of God is eternal life. That's why you need the Holy Ghost. And all liars shall have their part, shall, shall have their part in, we're talking about a location, in the lake of fire, in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. But, I'm doing it in this order on purpose. Bump up to verse 7. It says, he that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. And that means my son or my daughter. I'm going to leave the altar call to Elder Hubbard. But I pray that you decide this day what your life is worth and what you, what you desire to do with the value that God has given you. Because if your life didn't have value, you'd have nothing to wage. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. The only way. Most of the world. Most of the world. Put your hands together. Put those hands together. Oh, that's the word of saying. The only way. At this time, the doors of the church is open. Somebody might be struggling. Would understand which way do I want?